You know, I just only very recently realized how helpful this would be to people. Um, I know before my dad died, and that's been 20 years ago, um, I hadn't done the book yet. But he had such a fascinating, fascinating life growing up in, in pre-World War I and then World War I Germany. And then coming to the United States when he was 18, right when the Depression hit. He just had so many interesting things. And he told me bits and pieces through the years. But I thought, this is going to get lost, you know, when Dad is gone. And so I got him to sit down. He wouldn't write it, but he, he, I got him to talk into a tape recorder. So I have it all on tape. And a friend of mine, who's much more techy than I am, put it all on, um, on just a, a, a link. They gave me a website link that I can click on anytime I want to to go hear my dad telling his story. Now, he had a younger brother who remained in Germany when my dad came here in 29. So when the World War II broke out, my dad was uh, an American citizen, and he joined the American Army, whereas my uncle, my dad's brother Werner, he was in Germany, and whether he wanted to or not, they were conscripted into the Nazi Army. And... My uncle came over after the war, and he always used to, because he, the interesting thing is he went AWOL. He, he hated being with the Nazis, but it was not easy to get away. But he did escape, and he hid out. And my dad went across enemy lines, and he brought an extra American uniform, officer uniform. They would have both been killed if they'd have been caught by either side, but they, they were able to get through. And I'm thinking, what a story. We've got to get this story down. Um, my uncle, who outlived my dad, finally said, you know, I'm going to do it. And I said, do you want any help? Because he knew what I did. And he said, no, I'm going to give it my best shot, and then you can look at it afterward. And it took very little. He, put, he did a great job, and he was 90 years old. And he wrote the book called Brothers at War. And it has each of their pictures in their respective uniforms on the front. And that just always stayed with me how important it was, what a lasting legacy to leave to your family, even if nobody else ever reads it. Your family needs that. Um, my, my children, my grandchildren, they were so excited to get copies of that and say, that's my, my grandfather, that's my great uncle, and the history that's in there that gets preserved that way. So before my mom passed, I had her do it in writing. She did that, and we, I kind of gave her a simplified version of the train of thought method. And so recently I was mentioning it to someone at a, at a senior center, and they said, you know, people here are always wanting to write their stories. Would you come and share with them about the train of thought method and how they might do that? That's how that launched, and it just has taken off, and I keep getting invitations to go. And so we talk through the book, and um, they take a copy of it. And, and many of them, I hear from them all the time. I'm working on it, and I've told them all that when they're done, I will look at it for them. Um, now, it depends, because I can adapt it to, I've done as short as a 30-minute presentation, which is nothing. But then I've also done as much as a two-day. Usually five or six hours is the best, and I actually have them work through it, actually develop at least the heart of, of the whole story. And I, I see it taking off in such a neat way because it wasn't anything I instigated. Sometimes you try to do it yourself, and I think you just trip over yourself trying to make it happen. And when it just kind of happens organically, it's so neat to watch it grow. And people just come up to me all the time and say, I was so blessed with that. I'm gonna, I am gonna. was always afraid to do it, and I always wanted to. I'm going to do it. And so that's how that started. And I am really focusing a lot on doing that now.